Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and you guys, I'm super excited. Today we have the third installment of the Pat McGrath Opulence Collection, and I'm really excited to round out this collection with this palette. When I first sat down to decide how I wanted to film these and what order and all the different information I was buzzing through, I really felt like this palette, in general, was the perfect way to sum up the collection Pat McGrath and really highlight the differences in these colors. Like, I just, I feel like this is a very fitting way to round everything out and I couldn't be happier. So we are going to dive into this here shortly, but I do want to throw out there if you missed the first video, I did the pink sapphire, which I will link right up here. I think that's what it's called. And then the next day, which was yesterday, I did the aquamarine video. I will link that one right up here. And then obviously today we are rounding out with the ruby one just because like I said before, I feel like this is the most well-rounded palette to really pull everything together. And it's a really good middle ground between the two looks I've already done. So so we are going to dive into this one. I have already got my eyes primed and prepped, as you can see. Um, by the way, my little wind chap situation is finally starting to get a little bit better. I slept all night last night with like uh, Neosporin on it. If you are from a cold climate or anywhere that like it, the, the snow happens or like it gets really, really cold and blustery, Northern Michigan, hi, hello, oh my gosh. Um, if you're from an area like that and you know what wind chapped is, like on your, to be wind chapped on your like skin skin, comment down below and be like, I've been there, done that, because seriously, I forgot how much this crap hurts, you guys. Oh my god, I know I've said it in every video, but it's so ridiculous, and the only way that I've been able to get rid of it or even heal it at all has been with an antibiotic cream or Neosporin or whatever you call it. It's the triple antibiotic cream, and I, I went to bed last night with it on there, and it finally has started to, like, not hurt as bad, so what are the whys? If that's something you suffer from, get yourself some triple antibiotic cream, because I was trying everything, and it wouldn't go away. Like, anyways, so that is good. That's happening. Now, to prime and prep my eyes, this is where I was going with this story. I have already went in with the Morphe Brow Pencil in Java. I've been using this a ton. I'm really, really loving it. The color is super nice, and I have been going a little thicker on the brow per your guys's like, thought slash suggestion, and I'm kind of loving it. Giving myself a little lift. Like, we're giving, like, a nice brow lift moment. It's a good thing. And then to prime and prep the actual lid, I went in with my Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. I do switch back and forth between this one and that Eden Urban Decay Primer, which is actually right here. Um, a lot of times, like if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I will use this if I have it left over like on my hand from carving out my brows, which is what happened today. I just had a little puddle of it left over and I hate to waste product. So for me, this is such a good like double duty product because I can prime my lids with this and I cannot prime my lids with almost any, actually this is the only concealer I have that I can prime my lids with, that it doesn't get like cakey and chunky or repelling or whatever. This is the first one I've ever found that works. So when I have it left over on my eyes or on my hand from carving out my brows, I definitely go ahead. I prime that. I set it down with my Maybelline 05 Fair Powder, and I love it so much. Like, this combination for me is so good, and if you're looking for a product that can be so much more than just one item, like, for me, this isn't a concealer, or it's not just a concealer. It's not just a lid primer. Like, I can use this to shape out my face. I can use it to add dimension. I can use it for so many different things, and I think it's cool to just have more than one option with with like, you know, it's, sometimes you don't want to spend the extra $20 on just a primer, like a lid portion, lid portion, my God, on just a lid like primer potion. But if you do find that you cannot find a concealer, like for me, I tried that Mac Ochre paint pot business. That did not work. I tried the shape tape that everyone could use. That did not work. Like I have tried literally the ColourPop uh, concealer didn't work. And this for so long was my only option. So if you find that this doesn't work for you and no concealer works for you, this is such a good option. So I like to throw that in here every once in a while. I know it's a little extra, but it's just good info to have. So let's go ahead and zoom you guys in and let's go through and start the process on this palette because your girl is so excited. Oh, hi. Hey, hello there. Wow. <laughs> How you doing? Oh my God, you guys. So yesterday we need, okay, I know I talk a lot and then I promise we're going to get into the palette. Yesterday when I was doing this video, which again, you guys will have already seen, I came back on with my makeup on and I went through that footage and I was just looking at it. What? 
oh my god, I look like Vampira. I don't know what was going on. I think one of my lights was on the fritz, and it was too, like, it's, it was bouncing too warm or too cool, because I looked so pasty. Like, I just wanted to say that, because before you guys are like, bitch, what the hell happened? I do not know. <laughs> but I looked so pasty, so I apologize for that, because that's, that was unintentional. I was looking back through it, because I was looking at my photos. That's what originally got me, and I was like, is the light hitting my face kind of funny? Oh yeah, oh yeah, girl, it was. So, that was fun. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive in to this fabulous little guy right here. I am so excited. I really love this palette. This is definitely the most, um, what's the word I want to use? This is the most wearable palette, I would say, out of the three. It's the one that has two really beautiful toned crease colors right there. Both are matte. Both are going to blend, I'm sure, like a dream because every shadow has so far. And it also incorporates two really nice, like, super, super typical standard colors right here. The nice, um, just light, more fall type of typical glam shades. And then I love it that they threw in these super fun pops right here. There's like a glean, a, gl a glean. Okay. There's a green and a red, like duo chrome. Like look at, oh my gosh, you guys. These are, that was such an awful green swatch, but these are super, super beautiful. I love, 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 love this color. For me, it is such a difficult color to wear. Like, I cannot hardly pull off a red anything. Red, sometimes like a deeper, like a burnt orange, I just look so, my eyes look bloodshot in them, and I've talked about this before, so I don't typically wear those types of colors, but my God, is it beautiful. So, I'm really excited. Now, let's go ahead and show you guys, like, the real palette and the real swatches here. Now, if we are looking at it, it is the same super cute cute design as all the rest, the cute little closure on the front, all the writing, the mirror, trifold, all that good stuff. And if we go ahead and we jump into the shades, in the first row we have Celestial, Burning Desire, and Supernova. And then in the second row we have Dark Paradise, Corruption, and Provocatrix. That's what I'm going with. So these are, like I said, super beautiful, very wearable as far as the palette and, and having a couple crease colors that really work with all the different shimmers in this palette. Really, really beautiful in that respect. So obviously, to get us started, I believe we're just gonna start by diving in with this light brown right here on the Morphe Y16, a nice little fluffer brush, and we're just gonna start by working this into the crease. These shades have so much pigment. If you work with any Pat McGrath, I don't care if it's these palettes or not, girl, be careful, because they will get you good. They have got so much pigment, they are not to be messed with. Just word of the wise. I remember the very, very first time I dug into a Pat McGrath shadow, and I had no clue what I was getting into, and I went in and I was just like, do, 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 and I put it right on my lid and it was like, whoa, girl, you need to calm down. Like these, oh, they will get you good. And this brown shade is honestly beautiful as hell. Like, what are you? Oh my God, so beautiful. Just a standard brown. Like it's nothing crazy. It's nothing to write home about. But like, oh my God, but oh my, Pat McGrath shades, they blend like I have one in with the crappiest primer base on my lids before. Pat McGrath, like, they just, they just are always fantastic. I don't think I've met one Pat McGrath shade that I was like, mm. like, they're all really good. I'm impressed. So next I'm gonna grab my Morphe Y19. It's very similar to the uh, Y16 I was just using, like, in size and fluffability. The only difference is that the 19, which I'm gonna be going in with, it has definitely, like, that nice little point to it, whereas this one is just, like, a good, broad, fluffy brush, but both of these brushes are so, so good for blending, especially for my super, super hooded eyes, and I love the Y19 because it has that point on it, and I'm gonna grab that point, and I'm gonna dip it right on into that dark matte brown shade, and we're gonna just keep on darkening up that crease and really continuing to lift the eye. Good lord, this color's pretty. Like, hello, beautiful, even, like, depth, not patchy at all, just Stunsville. Like, who are you? Because you're not my real mom. Oh my gosh. Then I'm gonna go back in with that Y16 brush here, and I'm just gonna use that with no product on it, no additional product anyways. And we are just going to blend those nice matte browns together because we don't want any harsh edges. We want everything to be super beautiful and blended because, girl, that's what these shadows are. They are so blendy and bendy and sexy. Oh, my good lord. Hello, hi. That's so pretty. Okay, so for the center of the eye, what do I want to do? Like, I'm just obsessed with these shimmers, and I really do want to try and play with this red shade right here, that duochrome, because it's so beautiful. And also, something I forgot to mention, so in the Aquamarine palette, there's a blue glittery shade in there, and I was showing you guys how that looked really nice. Like, it's more of a topper glitter that you can put over the black shade and really work with it. And the green shade in this palette is very similar. Right here, I was playing around with putting it over that deep uh, brown shade that we just worked into the crease. Very, very similar effect. 
the green looks very nice and you can see it's glittery it's sparkly all by itself but it does apply also very beautiful as like a topper um, something that you can put over a deeper shadow just to really pop it and add a little bit of brightness to it so they did incorporate that element into this palette as well which I think is really pretty and overall just as like a fun kind of a Christmassy twist like I look at this and I'm like it's more than just the red green aspect it's like the usable wearable like Christmassy color but with a little flare of green but not over the top like green metallic crazy and then like you get a little red but it's more than just a red like it's a dual chrome beautiful shifty kind of color and I feel like it's it's like Christmas but like a little bit more a little elevated Christmas like sassy Christmas if you will you guys, I'm nervous, but I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and, like, shape tape out the lid, and I'm going to go in and try try the red shade. Now, I was debating how structured I want this to be. Like, do I want to go in and really cut out and define the center part of the lid or not? And see, I feel like normally I would, but because I'm going in with this red shade and I'm not sure how I'm going to like it on my skin tone, I want to be a little bit more cautious in that respect. So instead, I think I'm just going to kind of go on in with it. Now, to do that, I am going to be grabbing my Too Faced Glitter Glue. You guys have seen me use this all the time. It is so good. And I'm going to grab some of this just on my finger and I'm going to apply this right onto the center of the lid and I'm going to do it, I don't want to say like haphazardly, but basically I'm doing it with the idea that wherever I put this, that red is going to stick, girl. So you want to be relatively careful, but I also want to make sure that I'm kind of lightly tapping it over this entire area because I do want to get that red to peek up here just a little, little bit but not so much that it's like, whoa, overpowering on my skin tone, you know? And you'll see what I mean. Like when I put on too much of this kind of color, it really does kind of do me a little dirty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly begin the process of tapping this on. Oh my sweet baby Jesus, that's beautiful. And then I think just to add a little bit of extra dimension, I'm gonna pop in the center of it one of those lighter colors because hello, we have to have dimension. We love dimension. Hello, duochrome for the win. It's the best time of the year. And oh, by golly, have a holly jolly duochromey Christmas this year. Wow. Like, you guys, I'm crazy about that. And it blends in to that dark brown so beautifully. Now, I'm going to grab the Morphe Y19 real quick. This is the same one we already worked that dark brown in. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly on the edges blend that duochrome shade in with the brown. I love that with the Pat McGrath shades, the shimmers and the mattes, they just like butter. They just like blend together. There's never any like weird mixing. They don't like get clumpy or lumpy or anything. Like you can just, you can't even see where one stops and the other starts. And it's just such a testament to the buttery, soft smoothness of the duochrome shades. Like, look at that. Like there's no, there's no messing with it. It's just sexy. Oh my God. Ha, huh, I love it. Now I am going to go in and this is something that you probably wouldn't have to do unless you're me um, or you have super like textured and very oily lids, which I do. I talk about it all, all the time. Y'all are probably sick about hearing of it. You know what I'm saying? But it's the truth. And I talk about it very openly because I feel like so many people have the same issue and no one talks about it on YouTube. For some reason, people are like so insecure about their eyelids. And I think that that is so weird. No one will talk about the fact that like mine are hooded. Mine have like this weird little fat flap right here. They are textured. They are oily. Like girl, we have got issue upon issue of like textile rock on my eyelids, okay? And I'm the first one to tell you how I get around it. And one of the ways I do that, when I stack my shimmers, no matter where they're going or how I'm trying to do it, I go in with layers of glitter glue. And it's not a lot of glitter glue. Like we're talking, I take that much, which I will only use about half of because I tap it on the back of my hand. I take a tiny, tiny bit and I'm gonna tap that right in the center to go over because in the center I told you guys I wanted to pop out with another very, very nice reflective color. And I'm gonna grab the lighter one, which is this guy right up here. I'm gonna take it on my finger and I press it on over top of that glitter glue that I just set down. And I say this all because if you have super hooded eyes and super textured and everything that I just named and overall just really inhospitable eyelids, it can be really overwhelming to try and do looks when they constantly are getting ruined. And so this is just something that I've perfected because you don't want to go in with too much glitter glue. You don't want to go in with not enough so nothing will stick. And it's just really all about feeling out 
for me at least, feeling out that texture on your eyelids and making sure that you're working the shadow into, like for me, the crevices and the texture and stuff. I really want to work the shadow into those areas because that's what ultimately makes it stay. And so for me, this is what works really well. That's why I always make sure whenever possible, I really go into depth with you guys about it. And you can tell me down in the comments if you're like, Paige, stop talking about it. But I feel like it just helps so many people that I'm so open to talking about it because I know that you guys really, really benefit from it. And a lot of you have told me that you really benefit from it. So anyways, that's why I talk about it. Now I'm going to go back in with that shimmery red color here. And I'm just going to repop that a little bit on the outer portions just to make sure that it's still there and that it's blended nicely with that center shimmer we just went in with because we want to have dimension, but we don't want to lose that whole beautiful red shimmer we just had because that color is way too pretty to give up, girl. Way too pretty. Now I am going to go back in with a little bit of that deep matte brown on that Y19 brush and add that just to the outer V just to deepen it up a little tiny bit bit because like I've said before, I love to have a nice deep lifted outer V out here. It really does help lift and just like whoop that eye and I just love the way it works. Now that works for my eye shape, but remember, get to know your eye shape and do what works best for it because you doing what works best for my eye shape won't always get you anywhere and I would hate to see y'all waste your time. So don't do that, just do what works best for you. And then I'm gonna pat on just a little bit more of that red reflective because I love the way it looks, girl, yeah. Now, one of the other things that I love to do, and you guys can kind of see it right now, the way that the shadow kind of falls down, it doesn't give that lifted effect. So always remember, if you're having a hard time really seeing the eye shape or your eye shape or you're feeling like off about it, just take a wet wipe or whatever it is. Some people use tape and just kind of whoop, lift it up and all of a sudden getting rid of that, like all that extra shadow and redefining that outer V line can make all the difference in really seeing that beautiful lighted trans effect. That's so, so pretty. You guys, I can't believe how much I love that shade. Wow. Now, I am curious about this, so I'm going to try it, and I have no guarantee that it's going to work for my skin tone, but that light shade that I popped in the center is so beautiful and bright. I want to see if it will work as a brow bone highlight. So I'm just taking, this is my sponge tip double-ended applicator, and this is just the flat edge right here, and I'm going to take that and run it up into the brow bone. I think it's a little too dark for me. Dang it, but I just wanted to try it because it's so pretty. You guys, I love where this is at. I think I'm going to add a liner, I think. And I think this is the kind of look that when it comes together with lashes, it will look so, so beautiful. Like, I'm really impressed with how gorgeous that is. Whew, I love it. I love that color. I want to add, oh my God, this is what happens to me. I'm just like, oh, I just want to add just a little bit. And then before I know it, like I've totally changed the eye look. I did that the other day. I was like, I just want a golden smoky eye, like a really fast look. I ended up with like a blown out blue eye. I'm like, how did this even happen? Well, it happens because I can't stop. Like once I start, just like, bitch, these, they have like, these shadows are like Pringles. Like once you, once you pop, you just can't stop. Once you open them up, you're just you're done for life and you can't help yourself. You're going to be patting on shadow for the rest of forever. I'm going to run off of camera. I'm going to do this eye and I will be back at the end to show y'all the finished look. We're going to go over it and then I've got a lot of talking, <laughs> go big shocker, that I want to do with these palettes and the lipsticks and all of that. So I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I am back. I went ahead, I finished up the rest of my face, and I have to be honest, I love, love, love the way that this look turned out. I may or may not have two watery eyes right now because I might have stabbed myself not once, but twice, once in both eyes with my mascara tube, so that was cool. Um, so if they look a little bit uh, watery, it's because they're crying on the inside and on the outside. So let's go ahead and chat real quick um, about everything that's on my face. And I really am gonna then wrap up and kind of dive a little bit more into the Pat McGrath stuff. So first off, what I am wearing on my face as far as my foundation, which I'm hoping, I went ahead and I played with some settings and some lighting. So I'm hoping that I'm turning out a little bit more true to what I normally would look like. And if not, I apologize when I'm playing this back. I'm gonna make a couple notes and keep tweaking the lighting. But if you don't know, or if you're new here, I am kind of playing around with my light settings and incorporating new lights all like constantly right now until I can find what works really well for my like where I'm filming. So just bear with me if you can. And I promise if it doesn't look right right now, which I think from what I can see, it looks pretty good, but it always looks a little different in playback. Anyways, so that is why it looks funny. So let's dive into what I look like on, or what I look like, what I'm wearing. So for foundation, 
I'm trying a different combination because I said, uh, why not? And this is the Becca Skin Love mixed with a couple drops of the Catrice Prime and Refine just to darken it up a little bit as well as give me that nice coverage and the really good texture. I love this. This is such an amazing, I think this is like $5.99 or something. This is such an amazing foundation. And I remember back when I tried the Becca Skin Love, I liked the way that it wore on my face. So figured why not give it a little bit of a try today because y'all know I test out a million foundations. I have a ton, so why not use them? So I went in with that and then for concealer I used my shape tape nothing fun there the shade fair I sat down with my Maybelline fit me loose powder also nothing super exciting And then for bronzer I went in with my Marc Jacobs Tantastic bronzer right here this big old sexy looking guy I've used this a couple times in the last week and I've just been like loving it and missing it and it's just the perfect Oh god, like it's the perfect everything for me, my skin, my life, my world. I love, love this bronzer. Um, and again, this is the 104 Tantastic Bronzer. So good. Um, for blush, I went in with my, what did I go in with for blush? Hello? Actually, you guys, I'm an idiot. I already put it away, but it is the, um, the Hourglass, the three pan. It looks just like this. This is actually the highlight I use. This is the Hourglass Ambient Absolute Strobe Light Metallic Lighting Palette situation. This is such an amazing, reflectant, intense, beautiful highlight. So stunning. But it's, I use the blush version of this, the one that has the three pans that I say all the time. I talk about how I got it at Nordstrom, but I can't find it on their website website. That one. That's what I used for blush. And then this is what I used for highlight today. And then I actually went in because yesterday I did the super intense lashes um, from Lily Lashes. So today I wanted to go a little bit softer, but still have like that nice, like semi-fake lash appeal. So I went in with my super nice, amazing, affordable, fantastical Ardell Demi Wispies. These are the regular ones. They're the ones that come in this little pack right here. You get, what is that? One, two, three. You get like four pairs of them for eight, ten dollars, somewhere in that range. These are such good lashes. Super nice, easy to put on, easy to deal with. They don't feel heavy on the lids. They're just so good. So then diving into this little kit right here, which are these two lipsticks, I went in with the shade OMI, which is like this beautiful pinky nude shade, but it also comes with the shade Elsin, which is the really beautiful, like intense red vampy shade. So it does come yet again, like I've said a thousand times, each set comes with a red and a nude like pinky color. Um, I went in with the nude pinky color because I felt like it really complemented the look well and just pulled everything together. Now I did, I was like hesitant, but I did pop a tiny little bit of gloss on the center of the lip. This is that Becca Opal gloss that I used either yesterday or the day before. Um, it's just a really nice pinky toned gloss and it paired beautifully with these lipsticks I've been playing with and the formulas, they just meld beautifully together. So I've just, I've loved playing with them. Now, Let's talk real quick about the lower lash line because I went in and it was actually just a really super simple, super like soft moment that I went in for. I didn't want anything too crazy. And then I stabbed myself in the eye with the mascara wand later. And I was glad I didn't do anything intense because it would like be running down my face right now. So that was, see, it was good. It was like foresight for the future of pain. Um, for the lower lash line though, all I did is I took the, the super dark brown shade and I smudged that out closer to the outer V on the lower lash line. And I just really smudged and worked that shade in and then I went in with that lighter matte brown shade smoked that underneath of it I wanted those two colors to really meld together be soft and sultry but still look very nice and wholesome together and then toward the inner portion of the eye I took the really nice beautiful reflective color that I used on the top lid that beautiful champagne color I just took that on my finger and I worked it into the outer or the inner portion of the eye and then I kind of pulled that along the lower lash line and overall after everything kind of came together and is finished I feel like this look is absolutely stunning. Like, it's so nice. It's so easy and wearable and reflective and just, like, it's just such a fun, easy look. And with all of that being said, I do want to run through just a couple of pieces of information about this collection or this, this whole opulence collection and what I think and, like, my pros and my cons and stuff because I feel like now that we've been through all three sets, all three pieces, now is the time. It's really appropriate to do this part. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and I will say it. I have one, only one real feature about the these little kits that I don't like. The first thing I like, let me let me start here. I love that like you open it up and you do get a mirror and then you get these little six pan palettes. I believe when I did the mat, they were 0 0.07 ounces a piece. So they're like almost one and a half of a standard Urban Decay shadow. So you do get a nice amount of product here. And there is so much pigment that you use 
substantially less of these shadows. So overall, I think you get a great amount of product. I don't have any qualms with that. The only thing about this setup that I don't love is that like it is hard when you're just setting it here to like keep it, keep the, the flaps open or when you're using it, like it's hard to get, this is just floppy. So it always wants to like fall down because it's so magnet heavy and just closure heavy that it just kind of falls. That can be a little frustrating when you're just trying to get it to like stay, of course now it's going to stay open. This whole time it's been sitting on my vanity just like flopping all over, but it can be difficult if you're just trying to get in here to get these shades. Like if you accidentally tap anything or jick the palette, you know, these flaps kind of fall in and you have to kind of open them up and they don't fall like, you know, fold down all the way. So little things like that are a little frustrating, but overall, like if you're going to travel with it, I think this is a really nice, like good travel option because let's face it, if you're traveling in a hotel room, you don't have this setup. You're not going to have like a mirror right here. You're going to have to hold your palette and do a little bit of this action and you'll be able to have a mirror and have everything with you and know that it's all protected and sturdy and good. Like their packaging is pretty nice, pretty substantial. It doesn't bend or move around too much, which is nice. But again, just be mindful of that little flappy action that can happen if it's setting stationary. Um, as far as like if I had to pick a palette and be like, yes, this is the palette that I'm going to go with. This is the palette that I choose to use. Um, realistically, like if I'm being 100% honest, if I'm not, you know, looking at a thousand little factors, I personally think the most wearable, most usable is this Ruby palette. In the first one, you go and you're like, okay, it's really beautiful. Like, I love the colors. I love the shimmers. Like, I love everything that this palette has to offer. It's great, but it doesn't have any crease color at all in it. So for those of you that really need that, like you love to work that in, of course I showed you like how I like to go and, and routes that I'll take to go around that. But the reality is that so many people love to have crease colors and they love matte shadows and you want something, even if it was one color, something to blend colors out into. So for that, I'm like, okay, is this one the most usable? You know, not so much because of this reason. Like it's totally to the opposite side of why I think the blue one isn't as usable. And that's because this one focuses so much much on the dark, deep, sultry side of things that I just feel like it's more intimidating for so many people, myself included. You guys saw me in that video. I was a hot damn mess. And it's just the, the overall intimidation, like how wearable is this? It's not super wearable. It does have, again, crease colors, which is a step up, but in such an opposite direction to this ruby one, which has colors that we are confident in, colors that so many of us are familiar with, colors that we know, we love, we would get a ton, a ton of use out of. But it also has those two pops in there, that green, that nice clean, green glittery color, and the red one that I went in with that is so beautiful and so sexy and so like different but also usable. I just feel like overall this palette, if I were to say like pick one up, you can only like buy one or you're only interested in one, I really feel like this palette is definitely the most friendly, both user friendly and like you're going to get the most bang for your buck as far as um and usability, travel, and all of that. So as far as like that goes, I really love this one. But uh, honestly, overall, like base review for all three, I think they're all great. They each performed amazing in their own right, and I really wanted to take the time to go through, show you each of those steps, what I love, what I don't, why I love what I love about their shadows, and for me, what really makes them so beautiful and so unique as shadows, because I have been hard-pressed to find shadows like these that manipulate as well as Pat McGrath does, and as well as they, their shimmers blend out with their mattes and even their shimmers can just hold an entire eye look by themselves. That is impressive because I have seen so many shadows and, and glitters and, and pigment pots and everything. I have seen so many different products try to be what their shadows are and it's just a whole other dimension of shine and sparkle and blendability and usability and, and skin tone friendly and just like how their palettes work for every, every color, every age, every eyelid, every shape, every texture. They just work so beautifully. And I love the inclusivity that Pat McGrath has and is all about. So that part is fantastic. Now let's go ahead. I do want to dive into these lipsticks a little bit. And this is something that I just decided to do on camera, like right now. I'm going to go through and swatch for you on my hand, the um, three different lipstick sets, because I feel like if you're like me, when I first started opening these, my first thought was, wow, how cool. I got 
like three of the exact same color. I got three reds and three nudie pinks. And I was a little bit pissed off because I felt like I got kind of duped, you know? I'm kind of shocked that Pat McGrath did this and then put them all into a bundle, knowing that they were gonna sell people like three very similar lipsticks of each tone. That's kind of shocking to me. I thought one bundle would have like a red and a pinky nude, and then maybe one would have like a deeper something and a, a nude nude color. And then, you know, like a brown undertone nude or something like that. But anyways, all right, I went ahead, I moved myself back out because I felt like we were real close. And I just wanted to show you guys from maybe another distance what, you know, what these look like. So now that that is over, you guys, I feel very safe in concluding that, again, across the board, all of these Pat McGraths are, Pat McGraths, all of these Pat McGrath products are super consistent, super good. Everything that we've come to know and love about them, I don't feel like there is any issue with pigmentation or patchiness or blendability. Again, everything went on my lids and manipulated so beautifully for me that in doing these three completely different eye looks, one that's super duper easy with no mattes, one from yesterday that had so much blending and so much like time and evolvement to it, and then today's look, one that's like such a nice in-between, like easy go-to, could be work, could be going out, like you can do so many different things with it. And the fact that Pat McGrath shadows to me don't ever fall short in any of those areas is just truly magical, fantastic. I have never, like I said, come into any inconsistencies here, and I really wanted to pass along what I know, what I love, what I don't love so much with you guys. So, with all of that being said, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for this three-part series, um, and if you are sick of Pat McGrath, I don't blame you, girl. Three days is a lot. So, let me know all of your guys' thoughts down below. I know so many of you were looking forward to this, and I'm so glad that I was able to be here and able to give this uh, to you guys and just, I don't know, just hang out for it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you love the collection? Do you hate it? What do you think? Even if you don't plan to pick it up, what do you think? I wanna know all of your thoughts. I also want you to go down into the description box, check out my social medias. I'm mainly on Instagram and Twitter, so both of those are uh, linked down below for you. And then also, if you are new here or you have not subscribed, you should definitely do that as well. I do put out new videos Monday through Friday. I'm in Northern Michigan and they go up right around 6 a.m. my time. So that is five videos a week. We do a ton of makeup. Every Monday we do like, a cute little vlog. This past Monday, we went thrift store shopping, which was hilarious, so I can link that up here for you guys. Um, and if you didn't watch these other two videos, you should definitely go check them out as well. The looks were super fun, so overall, super good time. Super, super, super. I just said it like 20 times because I'm like, such a valley girl. And you guys, I just, I love you guys so much for hanging out with me and for letting me do what I do. This is a blast. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Okay. Do I look like I'm my color? Do I? Do I look like a pasty pale queen? It's time to sing and it's time to dance. Um, for bronzer, I went in with my Mark Tantex. My, you, know. you guys, I remember. I already put it away. It's the three pan. Actually, it's what I used for highlight, but the blush version. Version. Hmm. You trying to go out of focus on me, girl? Don't play.